All right, cool. Um, Scott Seafeld, my integrator and friend of the last 12 years, um, we're sitting right now with the great Kyle Walburn. Yeah. Where are you based, Kyle? I am based out of Evergreen, Colorado. Okay. And you are a f the founder and visionary of Efficient Aid. That's correct. Okay. Tell us about your journey. Yeah. You know, it, it, it's a really wild journey. Uh, I start, founded the company 10 years ago. And which is pretty bizarre. Uh, when I got out of college, I had an entrepreneurial mindset right from the right from the job. I worked a nine to five corporate job right when I got out of school. I lasted two months, and I'm like, nope, this is not for me. I was doing sales actually, and I was required to make a hundred cold emails and eighty cold calls per day. That okay. per day. Wow. I was doing IT staffing, so I was cold calling people trying to source uh, staffing. Lasted about two months wasn't for me. I was like, all right, I'm going to build my own business. So I sat in my apartment uh, in Denver, Colorado for about 48 hours and it just came to me. I was like, all right, I knew it right away. I was on my call to fish aid. I bought a website domain. I built the website, four page website, went to Vistaprint, ordered a hundred business cards. And what I did is I went on Craigslist looking for anybody that was looking for admin assistance, marketing assistance. And what I, I would email them and say, hey, don't hire someone full time. Just hire me fractionally, just a couple hours. Pay for, for only what you get. You don't need to buy me a desk, you know, nothing. I'll support you virtually. And this was 10 years ago. This was before this was virtual was really a thing, you know. This was pre Zoom, which is bizarre, right? Like our life's dominated by Zoom. I was doing everything on Skype at that time. Yeah. And uh, Fishnay was born. So at first it was just me, myself, uh, and I was supporting clients all over Denver locally initially. And then slowly but surely um, started bringing on staff, bringing on employees, and just recently brought on a full-time integrator and a business partner. And here we are. Wow, that's fascinating. Okay, I loads of questions coming to mind. Yeah. One of them, like, go pre, pre-college then. Tell us about your upbringing. Like, where did that entrepreneurial bug come from who who put that in you how was that like develop yeah it's, it's 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 a great question so my dad very blue collar worked in the paper industry you know was a mill worker uh zero entrepreneurial spirit but what was very interesting when i was growing up when i was in high school my dad forced me to work at his mill one summer and it was a paper paper company mm -hmm. Like child labor, like that like you were forced that way. It was horrible. And I'm like, Dad, why are you making me do this for a whole summer? I was working a swing shift. So sometimes nights, sometimes days. I was working on a line in a paper mill. I absolutely hated it. And after, I'm like, Dad, why did you make me do this? You know, I, I could have got, I was doing internships at that time, marketing stuff, just trying to be in the business world. And my dad said, I want you to work your butt off and I want you to realize you do not want to go through what he would he'd gone through, you know, and it was this light went on for me. And so it was really interesting. I got my hard work and like dedication from my pops. Um, you know, he's just a hard, he's just a hard worker, 35 years with a company. So loyalty, hard work. My uncle, uh, he was very entrepreneurial. He ran a few businesses. So, uh, you know, the bug was in my ear when I was young. And so I was very unique where instead of getting a job, let's say, you know, at Subway or whatever, I was out and I was cold calling businesses like, hey, I'll work for free. I'll do internships. And that was just what I was doing at a young age. And I think it was a combination of I do not want to work in a mill. Yeah. I knew that. And then, you know, seeing my uncle and seeing the freedom, you know, he had being a business owner. I was like, I want that. You know, I want to make my own schedule. And the combination of that uh, is really what drove me to be where I am today, I guess. Yeah. How on earth did you find EOS? Very great. That's a great question. Uh, so one of my first clients when I was just the Kyle Walburn show, it was a fish name, but it was just me. I was an assistant. Uh, I met Anastasia Toomey. She's an expert EOS implementer. Uh, she's here this week at the conference. And I knew nothing about EOS. She was just a business leader, and she needed support. She hired me, was teaching me about EOS. I'm like, wow, this is revolutionary, right? So then I, through her connection, started learning more about EOS, learning, you know, getting more involved in the community. And I'd say in the last five years, we've really dedicated AfficionAid to, you know, working with EOS run companies or the EOS implementers. And it's very unique about EOS. Uh, a very unique scenario we're in is we run on EOS, mm -hmm. we support EOS implementers, and we also support leaders that are in EOS-run companies. So I'm in this like unique 
angle where I'm seeing all pieces of the puzzle. Yes. You know, I'm an end user of EOS. Yeah. I'm supporting implementers and also the leaders. So I'm seeing kind of all angles, which really allows me to be fully immersed in it. That's really cool. Yeah, it's, it's, so it's cool. So you only work with companies running on EOS or you have a few you know, other clients too? Yeah, so uh, you know, our, our target audiences are you know, EOS implementers, leaders from EOS run companies, but also just your regular solopreneur, entrepreneur that knows nothing about EOS. Really, uh, in our VTO, our purpose, cause, passion, you know, is just helping good people who are out there making a difference, right? That's it. Very simple. You know, when I started the company, the core value I had before EOS, you know, I wasn't structured. It was just, just be a good person, man. Do really good work, yeah. and good stuff happens. Yeah. And I'm, like, living proof of that. Yeah. Li literally living proof of that. That's cool. Yeah. I love this. So take us back for a moment. Um, you, you met your implementer. And you said, ooh, EOS sounds exciting. What, what, what were some of the things that you thought were exciting about EOS that you would want to run your business on it? Yeah, you know, for me, it always boils down to two main areas, structure and accountability. You know, I mean, when I first started uh, AfficionAid, I was 20 years old. I didn't know anything, you know. I'm just, like, shooting from the hip. EOS gave me structure and a little bit of legitimacy, right? You know, now I understood I need to surround myself with the right people, not just from the hip, but with an accountability chart. So mainly structure and accountability, yeah. specifically level 10 meetings, you know? I mean, even now, you know, with our leadership team, we would meet ad hoc and, you know, half the time we'd be chatting sports, you know? You know, we're not actually getting, to, now, you know, running on the L10, it's an absolute game changer. So those would be the two biggest areas, yeah. uh, the structure and the accountability. Yeah, and it sounds like you've uh, gone beyond that, and EOS is part of your community. Absolutely. And so, was it was was that the original thought is uh, community, or was it more, hey, this is a great um, business process that I can run my business on, and now you see all of the synergies in the community. That did the community come later? Yeah, I think that's a fair statement. Uh, you know, for me. When I learned about EOS and, you know, the number one core value of help first, I mean, that's how I truly lived my life. And even prior to knowing anything about EOS. So that was the hook for me, right? Community is just a, is a great byproduct of being involved with EOS, right? You get the structure, you kind of put, it's great people, right? And it's good, good, genuinely good people who are trying to help businesses, which I'm a fan of. I mean, that's why I started Efficient. Yeah, I was just talking to somebody downstairs where, obviously, when we were recording this, we are at the conference, yeah. the EOS conference, and somebody said, it's just not like a conference, it's more like a big reunion. Yeah. And I was like, oh, it does feel like that. You know, people are hugging and high-fiving, and, you you know, obviously a whole bunch of new faces with a few thousand people here, but um, but it's just it's great to see those regular faces. This is our, I don't know, third, fourth year in a row. Yeah. Speaking at it and yeah. being a part of it, and uh, so cool. Yeah. <clears throat> um, so is, do you still have a, an implementer, or are you just kind of running solo? Yes, yeah, so we still have an implement. Anastasia is our yep. implementer. Cool. Uh, so, yeah, we're running quarterlies. You know, just had our quarterly, you know, a few weeks ago. Uh, <laughs> this will be our fourth year running on EOS. Okay. Yep. And, uh, yeah, and, you know, you know, with EOS, you know, the goal is normally to graduate, right, and, you know, move on. But, you know, she provides so much value to us, and she's, you know, more of like a consultant implementer, you know. I, at the end of the day, I'm not going to, you know, sit here and say I know everything. I'm, I'm 31 years old, you know. I'm still very green in the grand scheme of business, so I'm trying to surround myself with just really good, genuine people. But, you know, Anastasia's ran businesses. She's an expert EOS implementer, so very grateful to have her in her corner. Who's somebody you look up to in business? I mean, obviously Anastasia, but um, is there business leaders out there that you kind of think, oh, man, I'd love to be in a room with that person? Yeah, it, it's very interesting you ask this. Uh, well, my wife was driving me to the airport as I was coming to the conference, and uh, a, the guy that come, came up was Elon Musk. Yeah. And really, the guy's quirky, right? He's a very unique dude. But what is so intriguing for him is – he thinks differently than everybody, you know, and I, I find so much value in in that is, you know, not taking things for what they are, thinking what what the possibilities are. And just, it, when you listen to him speak, there's two things that really, you know, I gravitate to. One, he's extremely intentional. Yeah. 
if you ever hear any of his talks, he he pauses. Every single word he speaks is very intentional. That's not me. I'm just, uh, you know, I'm all over the place. So I like to try to learn from that, plus just innovation. I think, you know, that's that's key, you know. And so for me, he would be someone I look up to. And that was really what drove starting a virtual assistant company when no one had a clue what the heck that was. I mean, there's no Zoom, and people are like, what, you're only gonna work for a couple hours and you're not gonna have come to my office? You're just gonna work from your house? I mean, that was craziness. Yeah. And, you know, I, it's interesting. I had just thought about it for, forward enough to think, you know, that's an old model, right? And even, you know, due to the pandemic, now most people do work, room. it's very common. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, you know, I'd say just him, you know, innovation and just being very intentional with words and thoughts. Uh, I look up to him from that perspective. That's yeah. great. Yeah. Um, what about um, a, some of the threats, potential threats onto your business? AI, chat GPT, all of the other things yeah. that go into that. Like, That's a what, great question. How does uh, that make you sweat? And what are you thinking about it? You know, it, it doesn't necessarily make me sweat. It really is just another tool in the tool bag, really, the way I view it. So, you know, at Efficient we, we we're trying to stay ahead of those times as well. So we're learning chat GPT. It's a great tool, you know. You can't fight these it's going to happen. It's how you can leverage them to provide a better service. So for us, it's, you know, our assistance is learning chat GPT to enable them to be more effective and efficient. I'll be very frank. Most of our clients are not tech savvy and they're visionaries. Mm -hmm. They're not going to sit in front of chat GPT. You know, they're, they they want to just say, Kyle, tell me what I need to know, yeah. whether I'm grabbing it from chat GPT or from my experience or from my team. Uh, but certainly AI is absolutely, you know, um, I wouldn't view it as a threat, more of an opportunity for us to work more efficiently. At the end of the day, people are still going to need people to manage, yeah. you know, manage that, right? The follow through, the accountability. Yeah. And, uh, but it's very intriguing, you know, with what's going on. And just in general, automations, platforms, processes, you know, uh, new technology that's coming out. Uh, it's something we're trying to learn and that just allows us to provide a better product. Would it surprise you? If I said, and this is a made-up stat, but yeah. if I said 75% um, of administrative assistant work will be automated in the next five to seven years. Wouldn't surprise me uh, okay. by that statistic. I think it's a fair, that's, you know, the number I know you're, you, you know, you're shooting from the hip on it, but I, I wouldn't surprise me. Well, I'm mega smart, so I that's did the so calculation true, right? in my head. Exactly. That, that statistic is like probably Musk. valid. <laughs> you know, uh, what's interesting is... The, the service that you provide on day one of forming a company may not be the service you're providing on day 1,000, right? You have to evolve. So with us, with Efficient again, we're, we're not only providing virtual assistants, but keep in mind, you know, the stigma around that is I have an assistant means they're doing only admin work. That's not true, right? There's other things outside of administrative work that we can do. We do social media, we can do graphic design, we'll do copywriting, we'll do newsletters. So there's more than just your average, hey, I'm gonna check your emails and schedule your appointments. So we're trying to evolve and up-level that as well. Plus, clients will hire us not only to do the administrative work or the marketing work, you have a thought partner. You know, we're working with implementers. That's a one-man show. So who, who are they going to call? I got this shower thought. Hey, Kyle, I just want to run this by before I you know, announce it. So it's more than just admin service. It's accountability partner. Yeah. We work with visionaries, low follow-throughs. All right, they need someone to poke, um, having a thought partner. So it's I the statistic would not surprise me, yeah. but that's what we anticipate that, and that's why we're trying to provide a higher level of service outside of just the admin, you know, and, and uh, be a partner with you, really, truly. Yeah, that's cool. Um, and so um, you just spoke at the conference. I did, yeah. Spoke yesterday. yesterday. Um, give us the sound bites of that. So if I had a... I was going to go back and listen to five of the however many sessions there are. Yeah. Like convince, convince the listeners that they should come and listen to your session. Yeah. So, you know, I can really convince you in one statement, which was the title of my talk. Life is truly better with an assistant life is better with an assistant and the biggest thing that i spoke about is of course the biggest issue for most is letting go of the vine right people want to hold on to it and a gentleman said all right you know booking is travel he's like it takes me five minutes i pull my delta app and you know 
Well, when you have 35 minute tasks, that adds up pretty quick, yeah. right? So what I spoke about at the conference is the ultimate goal is to live your U.S. life. You know, and for people that aren't exactly familiar with that, you know, doing what you love with the people you love. And specifically what I focus on is having time for other passions. Mm -hmm. That's what we're truly trying to enable people. If you have an assistant, for example, checking your inbox, let's say it takes you 10 hours, 10 hours a week. You check your email a couple hours a day. It's very common for most people. If I said to you, Jonathan, I'm going to give you 10 hours back in your normal work week. I'm going to just give it back to you. I do be serious exercising. It's life changing, right? You know, two hours a day. Yeah, absolutely. You'd be on the treadmill. You'd be working yep. out. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and that truly <laughs> is life changing. You know, to get that, we're we're really in the business of buying people's time back. And so what I speak about is letting go of the vine and delegating. Right. Mm -hmm. Let's drink the Kool Aid. We're at the EOS conference. Delegate, yeah. to elevate. Yeah. You absolutely have to do that. And what the critical point that I made in my talk was is if I bought you ten hours back, there are two things you could really do with it. One. You finally get your rocks done for once. You, you know, you're spending time with your leaders. You're strategizing. You're focusing on bigger, higher level priorities. You know what else you can do with those 10 hours back? Nothing. Absolutely nothing. Go spend time with your significant other, your kids. Take up a hobby. Yeah. And that's really powerful. You know, it's, it's truly life changing. Yeah. And, uh, you know, that would be my biggest takeaway. I mean, life is truly better with an assistant. You have a thought partner. Someone that can help you, you know, take all the drug, these tasks you hate doing, you're not good at doing, just having some in your back pocket. I mean, that's yeah. There's a real connection there too. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And you know, one of the questions we got in the talk was about uh, professional versus personal, right? Doesn't matter. We're in the business of buying time back. You know, if you want some help coordinating your kid's soccer schedule on your calendar for the next month, hey, that's fine. If it's going to buy you some time back, it's all the same to us. Yeah. And I, I just. It's something I'm extremely passionate about, really, is like we work with visionaries, these implementers. Go, all I want you focused on is delivering high value to your clients. Not, hey, how about Wednesday at one or Friday at two, the back and forth of the sky? That's not the highest and best use of your time. And I'm really passionate about removing that off of people's plates. Mm. That's a good pitch. Maybe we could take, uh, I'd be really curious. So, Serial entrepreneur, if I could use that word. Yeah. You started young. Um, you realized that you needed the EOS process. I'd like to maybe explore that rocket fuel. That that you're you're obviously a visionary. It's yeah. it's inspiring listening to you right now. How do you? Um, how did you know? Or or for the visionaries that might be listening to this, how did you find the right fit from an integrator standpoint? What what kind of went through your mind and how mm. did you know that, hey, this would be a good fit for me? It's a really great question. First off, finding the right person, the right seed in that integrator seed is critical and absolutely crucial. And so for me, it, it's a really, really bizarre story. Uh, so Mike Abercrombie is an expert U.S. implementer. When I was first starting out, it was just me running the efficient aid. His assistant, Haven, uh, when I'm attorney to leave. Mike and Anastasia were connected and said, hey, Kyle, can you step in and can you fill in for Haven? So I supported Mike for about four months while Haven was on maternity leave. And when I started working with Mike, I realized how dialed in Haven had to his practice. Everything processed out. I mean, it was automated. It was step by step. I, I literally, she ended up going into labor a few weeks early. So I'm barely trained. Mike's got, you know, 35 clients. I don't know what I'm doing. She also went to labor. It's like, Kyle, I'm sorry. Our training's over. I'm in labor right now. She texted me when she was in the hospital. Like, you're off to the races, man. Yeah. But she had it so dialed in, I could just pick it up and, and run with it. About five years later, company's growing. I'm now ready to bring on a full-time integrator. She's the first person. It was done deal. First person I thought of. I have never in my career had met someone who I truly felt... Um, was that organized, detail-oriented? Yeah. And she was the first call I made. She was looking for a change as well and wanted to, you know, get more in business and have some ownership stake in a, in a business. Immediately clicked right away. And she's been on our seat now for, um, for – she's coming up on her first full year with us now, full-time integrator. Mm -hmm. Game – absolute game-changer for the business, right? Because I was sitting in that seat. You know, I was visionary. I was integrated. I mean, I was sitting in all the seats, really, at that point. Yeah. And now being able to delegate and just trust that she's running with everything, 
now I can truly be a visionary. I have time to, you know, do this podcast and spend time with you, Jonathan, and spend time with sponsors and think about higher level strategy versus the day to day ops. Yeah. And it's just a natural fit. Oh, so good. What What were some of the things you had to let go of um, when you were when you were you know doing all those seats? Were there some things that uh, maybe you could share with the audience that, hey, um, th these are some of the things I had to let go of as visionary. It, maybe maybe it wasn't the best things for me to be focused yeah. on. It's a really great question. And I'm also very unique. You know, when, I, when I've taken the, the assessment, I, I'm very much a visionary and an integrator. I'm about 50-50 a little bit. A little bit more visionary. So what was initially hard for me is I could do it. You know, I do have the brain. I am very organized. I'm a very detail-oriented guy versus most visionaries. Mm -hmm. So the biggest thing for me was delegating and letting go of uh, tasks that I was actually, you know, great at doing, and, you know, and I enjoyed doing, mm -hmm. but was not the highest and best use of my time anymore. And a lot of that was like running operations. We're in a big hiring phase right now, so it's doing the hiring, um, creating all of our SOPs, also uh, helping manage culture. I'm a people guy. I love our team. We're a 100% virtual company. So culture is it's tough, right? You know, I'm not I'm not meeting you down at the bubbler or you know or at the coffee pot. You know, we have to, you know, via Slack or Zoom or these channels. It's something I really love doing and I still am very involved in the culture, but that is one thing that was tough at first for me to I was doing all the hiring, all the screening, I was doing all the onboarding. Well, when you're growing like we are currently, that's not sustainable, right? So that was probably one of the biggest uh, the biggest items would be the just the day to day operations. Naturally, I was a micromanager. I mean, this is my baby. I mean, I built this, you know, just so everything I wanted my hands on. And I thought that was what being a good leader was. You know, you hear this like open door policy. You know, come, you know. I, I truly felt that I was like, I want to meet every person. I'm going to hire every person, every SOP I'm going to touch and have my stamp on. That's not sustainable. Right. So that would be the, probably the biggest things I had to relinquish. And it was especially tough for me because I enjoyed doing it. I really did. That's helpful. Yeah. How many employees do you have? So currently, so we have a unique model. So we have 1099 contractors and also W-2s. So currently we have, uh, geez, a little under 70, um, we call them efficient aids, um, throughout the country, coast to coast, all U.S., uh, U.S. based. And then we have a three-person leadership team. Uh, got our integrator, and then um, Rob is it sits in our sales and marketing seat. Rob's town says? Yeah, correct. Okay. Yeah. Cool. And what's very bizarre about it is uh, Rob is Anastasia's husband. Oh, okay. Yes. So I was working with Anastasia. Rob and I were obviously always, you know, hanging out through her and getting to know each other. I finally realized, all right, I need to, I need to bring some people on this team. I can't do it all on my own. Very naturally, I was like, all right, that's going to be, that's going to be my guy. I knew him. He had, and quite frankly, Rob, you know, is in his early 50s. So he provides uh, a lot of uh, stability for me. You know, I'm in my you know early 30s. I'm not going to sit here and say I know everything by any means. So I wanted, you know, surround yourself with good people. Are you Rob, saying the people in the early 50s are, like, old? So what you're saying? Is this being recorded? <laughs> <laughs> Just need this, you know. Tell us about the, the next 10 years for Efficient Aid. What, is, what does that look like? Yeah, that's a great question. You know, part of it was what we talked about earlier, right? Admin assistance is not going to be around forever. There will always be an element of it. But that 75% statistic, I think it's pretty darn accurate, honestly. Maybe in the timeline, it will take a little bit of time. So for us, it is going to be more uh, evolving our services, but really what we're looking at in the next 10 years. So our 10-year target, something that's very power powerful for us, how we gauge our impact on the world is hours saved. So we track how many hours we save from leaders. Really? That's interesting. And, you know, we have a formula that we do um, that tracks it based on billable time and, you know, this and that. But we track how many hours we're saving. So our 10-year target is to save 1 million hours. Oh, wow. 1 million hours. We're currently at a little under 70,000 hours saved currently. 1 million hours saved. Have, and that's wow, our that's focus. That's crazy. That's, what does that actually look like? I mean, 
when you scale that out and kind of ramp it up and all yeah. that kind of stuff, like how many people you need on your team? All that. It's a great question. You know, what we have a value of that is, you know, most likely that'll have us uh, being partnered with a little over 2,500 companies when it's all said and done. Okay. Uh, 2,500 companies are leaders, I guess you could say as well. And, you know, staff wise, you know, we'll be looking at probably 200, 250 plus fish needs. Okay. By when? To hit that 10 years? That'll be in eight years from now. Okay. So if you ramp up by eight years. Yep. Absolutely. So okay. big high so growth sl- phase. Is it a sl- slow ramp up or a steady ramp up? Was it a hockey stick? or? It's a hockey stick currently. Okay. Absolutely. Uh, which is also, uh, we have chosen that path. You know, part of it is it kind of fell in our lap, right? We've surrounded ourselves with good people. We're getting lots of referrals. But we've also chosen that trajectory as well. It's a very quick, very high growth. And that's what we're really trying to, you know, right now build the right team to handle that growth and make sure it's scalable. Right. Absolutely. Now, this is a, just a question. Do you only work with kind of visionaries and integrators for assistance or do people do companies extend that to other people in their organization yeah it's a good question uh absolutely yeah so visionaries obviously is you know a huge target right you know because they're living in the clouds we want them to stay in the clouds and so they need someone who is a high follow-through and you can take all care of all that those administrative tasks integrators as well but absolutely we'll work with full leadership teams you know, from the visionary, the integrity, to sales and marketing. You know, at the end of the day, no matter what seat you have, you still have an inbox. And you're still getting blown up with hundreds of emails. And you have to do scheduling. No matter where you are on the accountability chart, there's admin tasks that you're doing that you should not be doing. Right. And so, absolutely, we'll work with all sorts of layers of the accountability chart. And usually what happens is we'll start off with the visionary yeah. and the integrator. And then they're like, Wow. You know, I mean, truly, I, I, I'm very, it's life changing stuff, right? Yeah. And then, like, okay, how can I now free up Jonathan so Jonathan can now do more sales? Yeah. All right, let's get him an assistant now, right? How do you figure out the, the right match? I mean, I'm sure it's not 100% hit rate on that. Yeah, I like working with my assistant. And yeah. It's a great question. Yeah, and it's a really interesting. So I spoke about this in my talk yesterday about virtual assistants is you match on three three levels, right? Personality, uh, skill set, and also um, your core values, right? So for us, what we do is we leverage Kobe. You know, they're here. They're a sponsor. Most people, you know, are familiar with Kobe. Take a Kobe A. Take a Kobe C for the C. So you're matching based on personality. You got to make sure we're complementing, you know, each other's strengths and weaknesses. Geo zone, you know, we want to, you know, I'm not going to match, you know, someone in California with someone in New York. Don't want to navigate time time zones. And and then also just scope of work, right? You know, what do you need help with? So let me match you with someone who has a direct or indirect experience that can step in right away and be successful. Let's find someone who's in your general neck of the woods so you're not having to navigate time zones. But let's also make sure you're going to enjoy the person, yep. right? So we'll leverage Kobe, and we leverage the tools. Do a people analyzer. What are your core values? Let's make sure that who we're matching with aligns with those core values. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So those are the three main areas. And we, we leverage personality indexes, mainly Kobe. Mm-hmm. But, you know, there's a million. Myers-Briggs, DISC, you know. Yep. So that, that's, that's how we do it. And quite frankly, we've been very fortunate. You know, we have about a 98% or so match rate with our clients. Um, you know, just based on years of experience and, you know, finding the right person in the right seat. And uh, so, yeah, I think, you know, leveraging those three kind of main buckets is how we, we do our matching. Yeah, that's cool. Um, when you, what are some of the big things that are sitting on your sort of parking lot IDS list, you know, the issues list that's sitting out there? You're like, yeah, we've not figured that one out yet. Like, what's your big, what's your big wicked problem? Which you, yeah, if you had time and s- superpowers to fix, what, what would it be? You know, for us right now, you know, we're we're in such a high growth right now. It's finding the right people in the right seats and making sure they're properly trained. And so our biggest, um, you know, topic right now is how can we automate and streamline that. Mm-hmm. You know, because we were, you know, what we were doing up until recently is it was very hands on. Yeah. You know, I'm training you one on one. I'm spending hours with you. Well, again, you know, that's not always sustainable. Right. Yeah. So now our biggest topic that we're focusing on is automating that yeah. automating, streamlining training, making, you know, evergreen programs where they can you know, do some on demand learning as well. Yeah. That's that's probably our number one is, you know, quality is extremely important. Mm-hmm. We're pretty much 100 percent referral business, honestly. Yeah. 
all of our businesses through word of mouth. So our quality, I mean, that's, that's what we live and die by. So you can grow, right? And we can bring on a bunch of people, but if they're not trained and you're not, you know, they're not providing the quality service, that, that, that's certainly not going to yeah, be a backup one. There you go. I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Talk about just how do you balance? Obviously, one of the things we're going to do is we're going to give you back 10 hours a week to spend time on the farm. Yep. Okay. That's yeah. one thing we're going to do over at Efficient Aid. Yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> um, what's, um, how much time do you get to spend doing all that wild, fun stuff like llamas and chickens and yeah, you know, one thing that's always been really, really important to me is uh, like work-life balance. And, you know, yeah. I, I hate almost even using that phrase. I think it's overused, and I think yeah. it's just something that makes people feel great, even though they do nothing about it. Like, oh, yeah, I really value my work-life balance. And I was like, well, you, you sent me an email at 830 last night. Yeah. You know, and so for me, that's always been extremely important, which is very tough when you're an entrepreneur because you have some guilt sometimes as you need to work harder than anybody else, Right. But that doesn't always necessarily mean you need to work 10 hours a day. For me, that's working more effectively and efficiently. So for me, I start my days really early in the morning. 5 a.m. is when I start my day because from 5 to about 7, 8, that's my time. Very, very focused. I'm not getting hit with emails. I'm not getting hit with calls. And so by 5 o'clock, yeah, I can I can wrap up and call it a day. And, you know, for a lot of entrepreneurs and people listening to this, like, wow, this guy ends his day at 5? You know, that... To a lot of entrepreneurs, that feels like sinful. Like, what? You know, people feel this need. I need to work. I need to work. I'm not pro pr productive if I'm working that much. So I have to have that balance. Yeah. So for me, you know, it's working early in the mornings, managing my day. Because when five hits, bottom line, hey, the chickens need uh, need water. The llamas need hay. I mean, these <laughs> things have to happen. And it also fills me up, right? Like, I'm a very adventurous guy. I love being in the outdoors. So I need that. I yeah. need that time. And it ultimately allows me to be more productive in my work. That's cool. That's really cool. Um, okay, so Elon Musk, you'd love to sit with him face to face. Anyone else? Any other big uh, big mentors out there or people that we would not know but we'd uh, yeah. maybe look up to? You know, another person I really look up to, well, there's two. One is Brett Favre. I'm a massive Green Bay Packers football fan. All right. Brett Favre is, you know, just an amazing yeah. – Love Brett Favre, so I'd love to talk with him, um, just because he's an average guy, yeah. um, but just you know, amazing athlete and leader. Yeah. And the other one is a bit unique. Would be Mark Cuban, yeah. you know, um, you know, obviously entrepreneur, owner of the Dallas Mavericks. I saw him speak when I was in college. I went to school in Milwaukee, and I saw him speak probably she's 20 years ago or so. I'm not sure exactly. It was, it was a while ago, and I heard him speak. And one thing he mentioned to me, very much like an Elon Musk uh, style, I asked him a question there. There was, it was a huge keynote he gave, and I, I stood up and I asked him a question and said, hey, you know, I'm a junior in college. What should I be doing right now, you know, to prepare myself to be an entrepreneur? And, yeah. and, and you know, right away, what he told me, and I didn't follow, actually, but he said, get, get into the medical field and biomedical because he said pretty soon here, he said something that is a Stone Age system is that we all take Tylenol or aspirin. Yeah. But we're all unique individuals, right? So why are we all taking the same, you know, it's like a one-size-fits-all, you know, medication. He said the future is that you're going to go in, you're going to scan your fingerprint at a vending machine, and it's you're going to type in your symptoms, and you're going to spit out a customized solution specifically for you. I was mind-blown. And yeah. that's what's going to happen. You know, it will happen that way. So right away when I was young in college, I was like, you got to think. You have to think differently, right? Yeah. Don't take everything at surface level because what's going on today is not what's going to be going on 20 years from now. Yeah. And so that was uh, – I find him really inspirational from his just yeah, – these totally. people think differently, man. They do. You know, they think differently. You know, they don't, they, they don't take the norm – and say, yep, that's what I'm going to do. It's yeah. like, well, why are we doing it that way? Totally. And how can we be better? And at a young age, that's really what I, uh, yeah. you know, that ingrained, that comment he made to me, even though I'm not in the medical field, I was yeah. like, whoa, totally. this guy's light years ahead of everybody. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, it's starting to come out now, you know? And so he's another one. And I'm a sports guy. So totally. I'm like, wow, how cool. You know, he's running a business. That's a and cool story. Owns, a, you know, owns the Mavericks. I'm like, wow, that's. That would be pretty cool. I love that. And Scott and I love big and deep thinkers who challenge the way we look at things. Yeah. And 
and I think it's really cool about what you guys are doing at Efficient Aid is is you have to customize everything. Absolutely, because you're just you're matching people, and everything is about customization. Yeah, and we say it at Titus a lot. Like we uh, we've got to customize and figure out how to serve people in the best. Uh, the best and most efficient ways to, yep. to the, meet their needs. So love what you're doing at Fish and Aid. Yeah, it's great having you. you here on the show. It's great meeting you and hearing a bit of your personal story yeah. as well, the backstory, and definitely cheering you on as one of the uh, big up-and-comers in the EOS world, what you're doing as well. It's really exciting. And uh, a million hours saved. A million hours saved. Ten year target. We will watch this space. Good yeah. to meet you. Great story. Really yeah. Thank cool. you so much. I really appreciate you. Congratulations really on your success. It. Thank yeah. you so much. I'm really looking forward to uh, growing our relationship as well together. Oh, yeah. And huge lots fan lots of what you guys are doing sure. at Titus. And uh, I thank you for the opportunity to, to spend some time with you. You're welcome, Kyle. Thanks for coming. Yeah. Cheers.